Hello, and welcome to Christ Episcopal Church in Dearborn, Michigan. Today we are celebrating a Sunday after the Feast of the Epiphany. We have just a few more Sundays left, and then we'll enter into the season of Lent, which begins with Ash Wednesday. But for now, we're in the season after Epiphany, and we are celebrating the, lo the ordinary everyday life of Jesus and his ministry on earth. Let's take just a moment to calm ourselves, to focus ourselves, to center ourselves and prepare for worship. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh, 
be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told, uh, told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught, and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely they are planted, scarcely sworn, scarcely they have their stem taken root in the earth. When he blows upon them, and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, said the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see, who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthen the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up like wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to our God, for He is gracious, and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord built up Jerusalem, He gathers them, the outcasts of Israel, and He heals the broken hearted. He determines the number of stars. He gives to all of them their names Great is our Lord and abundant in power His understanding is beyond all measure The Lord lifts up the downtrodden He casts the wicked to the ground Thanksgiving and make Make melody to our God on the lyre How good it is to sing praises to our God For He is gracious And a song of praise is fitting The Lord built up Jerusalem He gathers them the outcasts of Israel And he heals the broken hearted The Lord covers the heavens with clouds Prepares the rain to feed the earth Makes grass grow on hills Gives animals their food And gives food to young ravens when they cry His delights are in the strength of the horse Nor in the speed of a strong man The Lord takes pleasure 
soldier in those who fear him In those who hope for his steadfast love A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. If I proclaim the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward, but if not of my own will, I am entrust entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation I may, I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have my, made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew, in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though I am myself not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, 
I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but I am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save them. I did it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. After Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening, at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed by demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases, and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I have came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I'm struck by three things this morning as I consider the scripture readings. One, how well they align with the collect of the day. Collects are prayers that follow the prayers of the people, as well as being appointed for particular Sundays or feast days in the church year. A collect does exactly what the word says, although pronounced slightly differently. It collects the requests that have been lifted up in the prayers of the people and it collects the theme raised in the scripture readings appointed for the day. Secondly, the themes raised in the readings and collect are pertinent to our lives right now. When we manage to live as God desires, we are set free from the human constraints that limit what we think we can or should do. Third, when we actually live as God desires, we are compelled to look deep into our lives and pay attention in a new way. For example, what do I make of the healing miracles in our gospel reading this morning? I could believe that this healing miracle is a description of a literal event and wonder why I never see such things, such kinds of healings in my life. I could not believe it at all and think that it's just a story that says something about Jesus but it isn't really real. Or I could hear it as it's probably intended, a story that indicates that when God is working in human life, something amazing happens. What are the amazing things that have happened in my life? I can think of several, especially in this last year. What about in your life? What about in the life of this congregation? What has happened, which if we were not people of faith, we might otherwise think was just a coincidence or something of my own making or some other reason that was disconnected from God. But instead, there are things that each of us can pull up that, are, that show us the amazing reality of God's presence in our lives. In this story, in the Gospel of Mark, we encounter Jesus early in his ministry, and it lays the foundation for the rest of his life. 
He has come to confront injustices in all of its forms and then to heal a broken world. God desires a world in which all creation lives whole and well, and Jesus' healing ministry reveals this to us. To be whole and well includes work, dismantling the systems of oppression. It also includes taking time to rest, pray, and be renewed. Not even Jesus worked all of the time. He frequently went off alone to rest, to pray, to reconnect with God, to be renewed. It's been almost a year of this pandemic, of sheltering in place, of wearing masks, of limiting our face-to-face engagements, of limiting how we go out, whether to go to the grocery store or shopping or pick up food or go to a sporting event or a concert or even to show up to church person to person. It's been a long, rough, exhausting year. And so on this cold, snowy day, I feel a need to just rest. What about you? I plan to just watch the Super Bowl, although I don't really care who wins. I mean, I care a little bit because I'm not a Tom Brady fan, but I don't care enough to really care. But still, I'll probably watch the game, mostly for the commercials, and I'll probably eat pizza or chicken wings or something Super Bowl festive, and I'll relax. I hope you do too. It's good to remember that God calls us to embrace life abundantly, as our collect says. It's good to remember that not every day needs to be a day of heavy lifting and deep prodding to recognize the way sin lives in me and keeps me in bondage, lives in you, and lives in our society. I can set that aside for today and just rest, pray, renew, in whatever way is most fulfilling for me. And what about you? I hope you can do that too. What can you do this day to find some rest, some renewal, something that helps you give thanks for the gift of life and the abundant blessings that you have even in these challenging COVID times? Let us say together the Nicene Creed, the traditional statement of faith in the Christian tradition. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and and the world. For peace between all nations and people, for those serving in harm's way, especially for... We offer our prayers for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. 
for the, the victims, victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God, for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our preceding bishop, for Bonnie, our bishop, and for our clergy, we offer our prayers. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth, we pray in thanksgiving for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. For all ministers, lay and ordained. We offer our prayers. For all who serve good God in the church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, we pray for those who are suffering in mind, body, or spirit, especially William, Christopher, Stephanie, and Abigail, Mark, Marshall, Ryan, Joyce, Christopher, Chuck, Eric, Jay-Z, Sue, Lawrence, Harold, Frida, Katie, Danny, Janelle, Caroline, Terry, Elaine, Norman, Adam, Judy, Erica, Bill, Scott, Tanya, Stephanie, Cindy, Sean, Rick, Patricia, and Cin Cindy, and all those who have been infected with the virus in their families. Are there others? We pray for those who healing has begun. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We pray for all who have died, especially and we pray for these from our family and friends. We pray that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your love and kindness be upon them. Who, who put, put their, their trust, trust in you. you. God of peace, let us, your people, know that at the heart of turbulence there is an inner calm that comes from faith in you. Keep us from being content with things as they are, that from the central peace there may come a creative compassion, a thirst for justice, and a willingness to give of ourselves in the Spirit of Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. All mess Almost merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. In union, O God, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. Since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ's bright star enlighten your mind and heart as you strive for equality, justice, and kindness in the world. And the blessing of God, our Creator, Redeemer, and Giver of life, be with you always. Amen. of the Lord be always with you and also with you go in peace to love and serve the Lord thanks be to God